In the world of rap, Lil Wayne and Birdman's story is like a roller coaster. They once showed their close bond by kissing each other, but now there are scary rumors of betrayal and even talk of a murder plot. How did things change so much? Let's explore why Lil Wayne is really scared of Birdman. Lil Wayne's early life and rise to fame. Lil Wayne, born Dwayne Michael Carter Jr. on September 27, 1982 in New Orleans, Louisiana, embarked on a journey that would see him rise from a challenging childhood to become a superstar in the hip-hop world. Raised in Hollygrove, one of New Orleans' poorest neighborhoods, Lil Wayne faced early adversity, including his parents' divorce when he was just two years old. Despite these challenges, he found solace and expression in music, starting to write rap songs at the tender age of eight. His talent didn't go unnoticed, as he caught the attention of Brian Williams, also known as Birdman, co-founder of Cash Money Records, who would become Wayne's mentor and father figure. Lil Wayne's early entry into the music industry was marked by his involvement with the group The Bee Gees, through which he released his first album at just 14 years old. A pivotal moment in his career came with his association with The Hot Boys, a group that brought together young talents from the neighborhood, showcasing their unique styles and narratives that resonated with many. This group, and Wayne's involvement in it, played a crucial role in revolutionizing the music game, introducing a new dynamic to hip-hop that was deeply rooted in their lived experiences. Wayne's solo career took off with the release of his debut album, Thaw Block Is Hot, in 1999, which was a commercial success and solidified his place in the music industry. However, it was his sixth album, The Carter III, released in 2008, that catapulted him into stardom. The album's first week sales surpassed 1 million units in the U.S., a testament to Wayne's growing influence and popularity. Beyond his musical career, Lil Wayne has made significant strides in entrepreneurship, founding his record label, Young Money Entertainment, which has been instrumental in launching the careers of other artists like Drake and Nicki Minaj. Birdman's early life and rise to fame. Brian Christopher Williams, known to the world as Birdman, was born on February 15, 1969, in the vibrant city of New Orleans, Louisiana. His early life was marked by significant challenges, including the loss of his mother when he was just two years old. Growing up in the crime-ridden Magnolia projects with his brother Ronald, Birdman's youth was steeped in adversity, leading him to become involved in the drug trade and even serving time in prison for related activities. Despite these hardships, Birdman's story is one of transformation and ambition, as he chose to pivot from a life of crime to pursue music, eventually co-founding the influential Cash Money Records. Birdman's entry into the music industry was both strategic and visionary. Alongside his brother Slim, he formed Cash Money Records in 1992, tapping into the burgeoning bounce music scene in New Orleans. Bounce music, characterized by its up-tempo beats, call-and-response structure, and dance call-outs, was a unique expression of New Orleans culture, and Birdman saw an opportunity to bring this local sound to a national audience. Cash Money's early days involved a lot of groundwork, from scouting local talent in nightclubs across Louisiana to managing the logistics of record production and distribution without the aid of the internet or digital platforms. When I first saw my one million, I was 14 years old, turning 15. Birdman's major achievements include forming the hip-hop duo Big Timers with Manny Fresh, releasing several successful albums, both as a part of the duo and as a solo artist. His entrepreneurial spirit didn't stop with music. Birdman expanded his business ventures to include an oil and gas exploration company and a merchandise line. However, one of his most significant contributions to the music industry was discovering Lil Wayne at the tender age of 11, a move that would eventually help Cash Money Records solidify its place in hip-hop history. Under Birdman's guidance, Cash Money flourished, signing artists who would become key figures in the hip-hop world and expanding into a multi-million dollar empire. The feud between Lil Wayne and Birdman. The relationship between Lil Wayne and Birdman is a complex narrative that spans decades, evolving from a mentor-mentee dynamic to a successful partnership and enduring through legal battles to reconciliation. Initially, Birdman took Lil Wayne under his wing at the tender age of 11, a move that wasn't initially well received by Wayne's mother due to Birdman's street notoriety. Despite this, Birdman saw potential in Wayne and wanted to steer him away from a life similar to his own, leading to Wayne signing with Cash Money Records at just 12 years old as part of the Duo BGZ. Birdman acted as a father figure, especially after the death of Wayne's stepfather, deepening their bond. In 2003, Wayne established Young Money Entertainment as a joint venture with Cash Money, with Wayne owning 49% of the company. 
This partnership underscored the success they achieved together, notably with the release of albums like Like Father, Like Son. In the chilly month of December 2014, just days before the highly anticipated The Carter Fa was set to drop, Lil Wayne took to Twitter to share his frustration. He had just found out that the release of his album was delayed once more, and he wasn't happy. I want off this label and nothing to do with these people, but unfortunately, it ain't that easy, he posted. Lil Wayne felt trapped. I am a prisoner, and so is my creativity, he expressed, painting a vivid picture of his struggle with Cash Money Records. Despite these heavy words, Lil Wayne's former manager, Cortez Bryant, tried to downplay the tension, suggesting things weren't as bad as they seemed between Wayne and Cash Money. However, Lil Wayne himself didn't hold back. At a party celebrating Vice's 20th anniversary on December 6, 2014, he opened up to the audience. I'm fucked up in a bad situation, but I will be out of it soon, he promised, hinting at the legal drama that was about to unfold. The situation escalated quickly. By January 25, 2015, Lil Wayne had filed a massive $51 million lawsuit against Cash Money. The heart of the issue, Wayne claimed Birdman had breached their contract by not releasing the Carter V. Wayne wanted out of his deal with Cash Money and sought freedom for his young money artists as well. Things between Lil Wayne and Birdman turned icy, with Wayne revealing in a February 19, 2015, Rolling Stone interview that they weren't even talking. But he was still hopeful about They Carter V, which he said was ready to go. It's super done, cake baked, icing on top, name on top, candles lit, he described, sharing his eagerness to release it if only he could. The conflict spilled over into music. In a Young Money Cypher released on March 14, 2015, Wayne didn't hold back his feelings about Birdman. He threw pointed lyrics his way, signaling deep-seated issues between the once close pair. By April 2, 2015, the dispute had reached a boiling point. During a concert in Jacksonville, Florida, Lil Wayne made his feelings about cash money crystal clear, shouting, F cash money on stage. This bold declaration echoed throughout the hip-hop community, signaling that Wayne was serious about taking on the label he once helped to build. In a strategic move, Lil Wayne decided to transfer his $51 million lawsuit from New York to New Orleans, closer to Cash Money's home base, in early April. His team released a statement, confirming their commitment to pursue the lawsuit in Louisiana as quickly and efficiently as possible. This step marked a new chapter in Lil Wayne's fight for his music and rights, underlining his determination to resolve the conflict with Cash Money. In the dynamic world of rap music, collaborations between stars often draw attention. But when ASAP Rocky teamed up with Lil Wayne on the track M Dollar Sign, it did more than just bring together two major talents. It became a stage for Lil Wayne to voice his clear dissatisfaction with Cash Money Records. Through his lyrics, I love my BMs, I love my YM ain't no more. CM Let's Pluck Out the Stems, Lil Wayne openly declared his loyalty to his roots and his distancing from cash money, indicating a significant shift in his career and personal allegiances. Moving forward in his journey, Lil Wayne made a significant leap on June 14, 2015, by joining forces with Tidal, a leading streaming platform. This partnership marked the release of his eagerly awaited Free Wheezy project, which debuted on July 4, 2015. In this project, Lil Wayne continued to express his feelings about his former label, particularly in the track He's Dead, where he bids farewell to his cash money persona with the line, rest in peace to the cash money wheezy, gone but not forgotten. This was yet another dig at Birdman and his company, showcasing Wayne's resolve to move on from his past with cash money. The saga took another turn on June 22, 2015, when it was revealed that Lil Wayne was taking steps to ensure Birdman would have no involvement in Young Money's future operations. This was alongside allegations that Birdman had a track record of failing to pay artists their due royalties, further straining their already tumultuous relationship. Tensions between Lil Wayne and Birdman escalated publicly during an incident on July 12, 2015, at Club Live in Miami. During Lil Wayne's performance, drinks were thrown at him from the VIP section, allegedly occupied by Birdman and his crew. This event added another layer to their ongoing dispute, illustrating the personal animosity between the two. The conflict took a more serious and darker tone with the release of an indictment on July 15, 2015. It claimed that Birdman and Young Thug had conspired to harm Lil Wayne, 
This was linked to an incident on April 26, 2015, when Lil Wayne's tour bus was shot at in Atlanta after leaving the compound nightclub. The situation was widely seen as an escalation of the feud involving Lil Wayne, Birdman, and Young Thug. Although no one was injured, Pee Wee Roscoe, an affiliate of Young Thug, was arrested and later sentenced to 10 years in prison and 10 years probation after pleading guilty to several charges. Despite Roscoe's implications that Birdman and Young Thug were involved due to their beef with Lil Wayne, neither was formally charged related to the incident. In the roller coaster world of hip hop, the feud between Lil Wayne and Birdman added yet another twist when Birdman decided to take on none other than Jay Z and his streaming service. Title. This move came just a day after a serious accusation surfaced involving a plot to harm Lil Wayne. Birdman claimed Title was wrong for streaming Lil Wayne's Free Wheezy album, arguing that Wayne didn't have the legal right to distribute his music through the platform. This led to a hefty $50 million lawsuit against Jay Z's service, further complicating the tangled web of music, money, and legal battles. As 2015 came to a close, a glimmer of hope appeared on the horizon. Despite their public disputes and legal entanglements, Lil Wayne and Birdman found themselves under the same roof, celebrating New Year's Eve at a party hosted by Drake on January 2016. A photo from the event showed Wheezy alongside Drake, Mac Main, 2 Chains, and others, sparking rumors that Lil Wayne and Birdman might be on the path to mending their fractured relationship. The speculation didn't stop there. At Club Live, Lil Wayne and Birdman shared the stage in a moment that felt like a public declaration of their intention to put the past behind them. Birdman took this opportunity to express express his unwavering affection and loyalty to Lil Wayne, emphasizing the unbreakable bond of their family. It seemed as if their long-standing feud was finally coming to an end, with Birdman's heartfelt proclamation hinting at a brighter future for both. Adding to the speculation, Birdman and Lil Wayne were seen together in the studio with Yo Gotti by January 20th, 2016. This sighting further fueled the rumors that their disagreements were nearing a resolution, showcasing a potential collaborative effort that could mark a new chapter for both artists. However, just as the dust seemed to be settling, Lil Wayne opened another legal front, this time against Universal Music Group on March 28, 2016. Wayne's lawsuit sought $40 million, claiming he was owed profits from the successes of Young Money artists like Drake, Nicki Minaj, and Tyga. The suit also alleged that Universal used Wayne's earnings to offset the debts accumulated by Birdman at Cash Money, revealing the deep financial entanglements that complicated their relationship. I could honestly say I gave Wayne about $400 to $500 million. In the midst of these reconciliatory gestures and ongoing legal battles, Lil Wayne made his feelings about Cash Money known once more in his feature on Chance the Rapper's No Problems from the Coloring Book album. Without naming names, Wayne's verses conveyed a clear message of defiance against the label, hinting at the unresolved tensions and his determination to fight for what he believes he's owed. This track became a public declaration of Wayne's ongoing struggle against the constraints and controversies that had marked his career in recent years. During a live performance at the 420 rally in Denver, Colorado, Lil Wayne didn't hold back his feelings, openly criticizing Cash Money Records with a passionate Cash Money declaration. This outburst was reportedly fueled by stalled negotiations to resolve Wayne's legal disputes with the label, highlighting his ongoing dissatisfaction and struggle for freedom from the contractual binds that held him. When all that shit took place, bro kinda shit with me because I never thought it could happen. So when it did happen, the same day it happened, Wayne came to me like, what the fuck, man? In a moment that shocked fans and the music world alike, on September 3rd, 2016, Lil Wayne hinted at the possibility of retiring from the rap game. Through a series of heartfelt tweets, he shared his feelings of defeat stemming from his prolonged legal battle with Cash Money. Wayne's sentiments were further elaborated during his appearance on Skip Bayless's show, Undisputed, on FS1, where he disclosed that a recent argument with Birdman had pushed him to the brink, vowing to never collaborate with Birdman again. The conflict escalated when Lil Wayne accused Birdman of misappropriating a significant portion of a $100 million advance from Universal Music Group intended for Young Money. Legal documents suggested that Birdman had allegedly taken more than $70 million of the advance, funds that were supposed to cover royalties, marketing, and recording expenses. This accusation shed light on the financial disputes at the heart of their conflict in a turn of events that seemed to offer some hope to Lil Wayne. A judge sided with him on September 26, 2016. 
2016, the court ordered Birdman to provide a detailed account of how the $100 million Young Money advance was spent. This legal victory was a significant moment for Team Wheezy, indicating that the justice system was willing to ensure transparency and accountability in the dispute. However, any optimism for a quick resolution was dashed when Birdman reportedly halted settlement talks in November 2016. This decision was in response to Lil Wayne's public shout-out to Rockefeller during a performance, instead of cash money, signaling a deepening of the rift between the two. Amidst this backdrop of legal battles and public disputes, Rick Ross entered the fray with his track Idols Become Rivals from his ninth studio album. Released on March 16, 2017, the song was a direct critique of Birdman's treatment of Lil Wayne and other cash money artists and producers. Ross's lyrics reflected a broader sentiment within the hip-hop community, calling for fairness and respect for the artist's contributions. While Birdman remained silent in response, Lil Wayne reached out to Ross, thanking him for his support and acknowledging the track as a source of inspiration. In the midst of a heated legal battle and public disputes, the saga between Lil Wayne and Birdman took another turn in July 2016. More than half a year after their negotiations hit a dead end, Lil Wayne took a significant step by filing an amended petition in a New Orleans court. This time, he not only named Birdman, but also Ronald Slim Williams and Universal Music Group in his legal action. Wayne was fighting for more than $40 million in actual damages, pointing out that he hadn't received the $8 million advance owed to him for the Carter V. Moreover, he claimed that these parties were blocking him from earning profits from the success of Drake and Nicki Minaj, two of the biggest stars under the Young Money banner. As the music community rallied behind Lil Wayne, Birdman took to Instagram Live to confront his critics head-on. He passionately defended his relationship with Lil Wayne, claiming he had always looked out for him like a son. Birdman's message was clear. He was deeply offended by the accusations and suggested that his contributions to Wayne's career were being overlooked. His language was bold and unapologetic, signaling his frustration with the narrative being formed against him. Amidst this tension, Rick Ross, a prominent figure in the hip-hop community and a vocal supporter of Lil Wayne, made his stance known. He used Snapchat to question whether Birdman had fulfilled his financial obligations to Wayne, echoing the sentiments of many who felt Wayne deserved better. Ross's involvement added another layer to the dispute, highlighting the industry-wide attention it had garnered. However, in March 2018, a surprising development occurred. Lil Wayne and Birdman were seen together at Club Live, showing signs of reconciliation. A video captured their warm embrace and conversation, marking their first public display of unity in over a year. This moment sparked speculation that their legal and personal issues might finally be on the path to resolution. The speculation continued to grow when Lil Wayne made an appearance at Birdman's release party for the Before Anything soundtrack at the end of March. Birdman shared a photo of the two on Instagram, signaling a public show of solidarity. This act of camaraderie suggested that, despite the ongoing lawsuits and unresolved disputes, there was still a bond between them that could pave the way for an official truce, the resolution of the feud. In late March 2018, the hip-hop world was taken by surprise when Birdman and Lil Wayne were seen together, enjoying each other's company at the release party for the Before Anything soundtrack. This unexpected reunion sparked a lot of chatter and speculation that the pair had finally buried the hatchet after their long and public dispute. To clear the air and explain the reasons behind their reconciliation, Birdman spoke candidly in an interview with Ebro Darden on Beats Weren Radio. Birdman emphasized the the significance of making amends with Lil Wayne, expressing a deep-seated need to resolve their issues for the sake of their personal connection and shared history. He conveyed a strong sense of responsibility, stating, far as me and Shorty, I got that. I'ma make sure he's straight, we straight, and we gon' continue doing what we started. This statement reflected his commitment to ensuring both their well-being and to preserving the legacy of what they began together in the music industry. The cash money head honcho also highlighted the impact of their feud on their families, pointing out that that the discord had started to affect their children, which he found unacceptable. He shared a touching detail about his relationship with Wayne's daughter, Regina Carter, who he regards as his godchild and holds in great affection. Birdman's remarks shed light on the intertwined lives of the two men revealing a bond that extends beyond music to include deep personal connections with each other's families. It's just a weird relationship, but it's solid, he admitted, illustrating the complexity and strength of their ties. The root of their conflict traced back to a lawsuit filed by Lil Wayne in 2015, where he demanded $51 million. Wayne's lawsuit was a culmination of grievances, including the delay of his much-awaited album The Carter Five, and compensation for discovering and nurturing Young Money's biggest stars, Nicki Minaj and Drake. Birdman's willingness to reconcile with Wayne hinted at a hopeful future not just for them personally, but also for their fans, who have been eagerly awaiting the release of The Carter Five. 
This heart-to-heart -heart with Ebro Darden offered a glimpse into Birdman's perspective, showcasing his intentions to right the wrongs of the past and move forward with Lil Wayne by his side. It was a moment of reflection and resolution, with Birdman expressing a genuine desire to close a turbulent chapter and focus on healing and growth. The potential end of their feud not only promised a brighter future for their relationship, but also reignited excitement among fans for what their renewed collaboration could bring to the music world. Lil Wayne and Birdman's relationship now. Lil Wayne, the acclaimed rapper known for his unique style and prolific output, recently shared insights into his musical influences and listening habits, shedding light on a pivotal moment in his career. In a revealing interview with Rolling Stone, the 40-year-old artist explained why his playlist is exclusively comprised of his own music and that of artists he's mentoring. When it comes to rap, I don't listen to no one, Wayne stated. His reasoning is straightforward. He believes immersing himself in others' music could inadvertently influence his own sound, something he encourages his protégés to be mindful of to maintain their originality. The conversation took a more personal turn when Wayne recounted an incident with Birdman, the head of Cash Money Records, that significantly impacted his approach to music. Birdman, concerned about Wayne's artistic direction at the time, confronted him about his tendency to mirror Jay-Z, a rapper Wayne openly admires. It took Birdman and them to pull my ass aside and be like, bro, I'm tired of every song you doing sounding like damn Jay-Z, Wayne recalled. You're not Jay-Z. This critique served as a wake-up call for Wayne, prompting him to further refine his distinct sound and lyrical identity. The timing of this conversation is believed to have occurred in the mid-2000s, a period when Wayne was vocally asserting himself as the best rapper alive, especially in the wake of Jay-Z's temporary departure from the music scene following the Black Album. Despite his admiration for Jay-Z and even considering a move to Rockefeller Records after his initial contract with Cash Money ended, Wayne ultimately chose to stay with Birdman and Cash Money, underscoring the complex relationship between mentorship, loyalty, and artistic growth. In addition to discussing his musical influences, Wayne also touched on his creative process, particularly regarding his iconic Tha Carter series. Surprisingly, he admitted to having a blurred recollection of the recording sessions for these albums, saying, I don't know the Carter 3, the Carter 2, the Carter 1 from the Carter 4. His candidness about not distinguishing between the individual albums highlights the intuitive and spontaneous nature of his work ethic, focusing more on the act of creation rather than the intricacies of each project. Wayne's reflections offer a rare glimpse into the mindset of an artist continually striving to innovate while navigating the influences and expectations that come with being a prominent figure in the rap industry. His dedication to authenticity and improvement not only shapes his approach to music, but also serves as guidance for the next generation of artists looking to carve out their own paths in the complex landscape of hip-hop. This father-son relationship between them is the reason why Lil Wayne is scared of Birdman. And that's our video. If you enjoyed it, check out one of these boxes too. I'll catch you on the next one.